Yo, what's going on everybody? Swag Kage here, and welcome to today's video, where we're going to be talking about Kamui, a space-time ninjutsu tied to the Mangekyo Sharingan of Obito Uchiha. Like many Mangekyo Sharingan powers, Kamui is really strong, and also like many Mangekyo Sharingan powers, its name is rooted in Japanese folklore. It's not directly named after a Shinto god like Tsukuyomi, Amaterasu, Kagatsuchi, and abilities like them, but it instead refers to the power and authority of the Shinto gods as a whole. As a matter of fact, when trans translated into English, Kamui literally means authority of the gods. So with a name like that, one might be led to believe that Kamui is really powerful, and rightfully so, because it is. It's one of the most useful and versatile ninjutsu in the entire series, though I guess that's to be expected since it's a Mangekyo Sharingan power. Even when taking that into account, though, I think Kamui is one of the best abilities granted by the Mangekyo Sharingan, at least out of the ones we've seen so far, especially when both of its variants are used in conjunction with one another. But I digress, I'm getting way ahead of myself, so let me get to actually explaining how the technique works. So Obito's Mangekyo Sharingan are unique, at least in the sense that they both give him access to the same ability, the same way both of Shisui's Mangekyo Sharingan give him access to Kodo Amatsukami, but the abilities are distinctly different and inexplicably linked together the same way Sasuke's Amaterasu and Kagatsuchi are. Both of these eyes allow their owner to access an unnamed pocket dimension, typically referred to as the Kamui dimension, though each one goes about doing this in one of two completely different ways. Now while each eye is intended to be used for different purposes, they both have very similar applications. They are both ocular jutsu that involve the manipulation of space. And as an ocular jutsu, the space Kamui seeks to manipulate is always somewhere within the user's visual focal point, at least to some extent. Obito's left eye allows him to project a portal to his pocket dimension out into space, specifically directed at the focal point of his vision. In other words, this allows him to use a long-range version of Kamui, and its general purpose is to teleport people, objects, and other targets into the dimension using these long-range portals. Meanwhile, his right eye allows him to create a portal to this pocket dimension centered at its own position, as in the position of his right eye itself. It's almost like the eye becomes a door to the dimension. In other words, this allows him to cast a short-range version of Kamui. And just like the portals created by his left eye, this portal can teleport people and objects into the dimension for whatever reason he sees fit. That's the quick version of it anyway. The mechanics of this jutsu are quite a bit more complicated than that. Getting into the specifics of this ability is really tricky. Let me start with the details of the left eye's ability, since it's a bit less complicated than the right eye. As I mentioned earlier, Obito's left Mangekyo Sharingan allows him to project portals to Kamui's dimension forward into space and usually centered around the focal point of his vision. The reason there's more to the left eye's abilities than meets the eye is its owner can control the shape and size of the portals they create, and they can also choose how long these portals remain tangible. Doing so requires training, of course, as Kakashi had pretty much no control over any of these things when he first used it against Datara. Furthermore, this portal acts sort of like a black hole, as it draws everything near it towards its center, and kind of forcibly drags its targets into Kamui's dimension, as opposed to just letting them fall into it. Also, the portals created by the left eye do not always seek to teleport the entirety of their targets. Kakashi and Obito can use this to their advantage by sucking pieces of an opponent's body into Kamui's dimension, like when Kakashi completely tore off Datara's arm with this ability, or when he used it to effectively destroy half of the Ghetto statue. And speaking of the Ghetto statue, the fact that Kakashi was able to teleport half of it into Kamui's dimension practically confirmed that he has full control over the size of the portals he creates, like I mentioned earlier. This, of course, allows him to transport a wide variety of things into Kamui's dimension, ranging anywhere from something as small as a kunai knife to something as large as the entire Eight Tails. While this form of Kamui can be used defensively, it is best used offensively, and can even be considered an instant kill move, since Obito and Kakashi by extension could use this left eye to hypothetically snipe off a person's head by teleporting it into Kamui's dimension, the same way Kakashi teleported Datara's arm there. Oh yeah, also one final note is Obito's left eye can also eject things that it's teleported into Kamui's dimension, like when Kakashi ejected Gyuki's entire body, though the portal that the person or object is emerging from needs to be created at a range, like all of the left eye's portals do. Also, Madara seems to be capable of using the left eye to teleport himself into Kamui's dimension, despite the fact that that should be a right eye exclusive ability, but whatever. Anyways, speaking of, now I think it's about time I move on to the specifics of the right eye. This one is a great deal more complicated. So while the abilities of the right eye might sound inferior to the abilities of the left on paper, this one arguably provides better abilities than the left does. Short-range teleportation might not seem as useful as 
long range teleportation, but Obito can accomplish a whole bunch of really creative and unorthodox things with it. For starters, at least initially anyway, while Kakashi was unable to teleport himself into Kamui's dimension, Obito could. And while I guess that's not a huge advantage anymore now that Madara showed that it is possible to use the left eye to teleport oneself into Kamui's dimension, I do think it's worth keeping in mind because that might have been a plot hole. Regardless, even if the left eye is capable of teleporting its user into Kamui's dimension, it can't do so with the same level of finesse that the right eye can. Obito is capable of using his right eye to teleport pieces of his body into Kamui's dimension. But, unlike what happens when he teleports a piece of somebody else's body into Kamui's dimension with the left eye, when Obito teleports pieces of his own body, they will remain intact after he returns them. By storing pieces of himself in Kamui's dimension this way, he is able to make either parts of his body or his entire body, if he chooses to, intangible. Of course, intangibility allows Obito to phase through solid matter, which makes him practically invincible when Kamui is active. When using Kamui this way, Obito does have a few weaknesses, but they're pretty easy to cover, so doing any sort of damage to somebody with Obito's right Mangekyo Sharingan is borderline impossible. The first of these weaknesses is that he can only remain intangible for five minutes continuously. This isn't too much of a problem, since there aren't a whole lot of situations where Obito will need to stay intangible for five minutes at a time, and more often than not, he can just phase through objects before materializing again and calling on the effects of Kamui when needed. But in rare instances, it is possible to use really excessive amounts of force to exploit this weakness, such as when Conan set up a literal ocean of paper bombs meant to detonate for 10 minutes straight. The second of these weaknesses is that Obito can only attack targets while he's materialized. Since he can switch between tangibility and intangibility very quickly, it's very hard to capitalize on this weakness. But for somebody incredibly fast, like the third or fourth Raikage, or somebody with the Flying Thunder God technique like Minato Namikaze, it is possible to damage Obito during the split second that he is materialized. The last of these weaknesses is incredibly situational and practically non-existent as a result of that. When Obito and Kakashi fought in the fourth great ninja war, Kakashi discovered that their eyes were connected to the same time space, and also realized that while Obito stores parts of his body in the Kamui dimension, Kakashi can teleport weapons like kunai or even entire people like Naruto to that dimension to damage Obito while he's there. This pretty much completely nullifies Obito's ability to phase through matter, but again, it's incredibly situational since it only applies when Obito is fighting Kakashi. Anyway, Obito's right eye does give him access to quite a few other abilities. For example, as he can do with his left eye, Obito can eject people and objects that he's teleported into Kamui's dimension with his right eye, though in this case it is done at close range, making this application quite a bit easier to use and quite a bit more versatile as well. It also seems to require less focus to do this with his right eye, though that may be due in part to the fact that the only person to ever do it with Obito's left eye was Kakashi, and Kakashi was using a transplanted Sharingan as a non-Uchiha, which comes with a whole lot of negative side effects, so I can't say for sure. Anyway, Obito can also very easily teleport both himself and other people into Kamui's dimension with his right eye, and can also choose to eject himself at any point in the outside world, allowing him to effectively teleport. He can teleport himself, other people, other objects, you name it. Though it is worth pointing out that if he's transporting something other than himself, he needs to be making direct contact with it. And it's also stated that it's impossible to trace his chakra or the chakra of anybody he's transporting with him when he teleports this way. Minato even says that this is a more potent space-time ninjutsu than the Flying Thunder God technique. And that's like THE teleportation jutsu, so that's gotta mean something. Now when both eyes are working in conjunction with one another, they're capable of some pretty crazy stuff. Not only are they capable of teleporting targets twice as fast when they're both focused on one thing at the same time, like as in fast enough to outspeed a truth-seeking orb, but additionally, somebody with both of Obito's Mangekyo Sharingan can create two portals to Kamui's dimension and connect them. These two portals can be further used in conjunction with another space-time ninjutsu, like Kaguya's Yamotsu Hirasaka ability. Obito was able to connect the portals created by his left eye with one of the portals Kaguya was creating to another one of her dimensions, and use the portal created by his right eye to teleport through that portal. It's a bit confusing to explain verbally, but if you read the fight with Kaguya, you'll see what I mean. Synchronizing with another space-time is very taxing on a user of Kamui, as it pretty much sapped Obito of all of the chakra he had left when he attempted to do it. And this brings me to Kamui's chakra cost, along with the risk of blindness associated with it. Obito's repeated use of Kamui has had no negative impact on his eyesight whatsoever. The only time his eyes have ever started to bleed were immediately after he first used Kamui in the battle against all of the Blood Mist Ninja that he massacred, and when he used Kamui in synchronization with Yomotsu Hirasaka. That's it. Obito has never once shown any sign of blindness or impaired vision, and while Kakashi initially showed signs of fatigue, 
fatigue after using Kamui. I mean, heck, he was stuck in the hospital for like an entire month after using Kamui on Daedara a couple times. Through training, he was able to increase the amount of times he can use Kamui per day, though I'm not sure about the blindness. He did state during the war that he was getting close to going blind, though he used it way too many times for me to believe he shouldn't have been blind by that point already. He was given Chakra from Kurama, so that might have had something to do with it, but I'm not entirely sure. A lot of people attribute Obito's resistance to the ill effects of his Mangekyo Sharingan to the fact that he has Hashirama cells, and I guess I can buy that. I'm not entirely sure why that would have an effect on how much Chakra Kamui would cost, since Obito has never once said anything that implies that Kamui was about to cause him to run out of Chakra. But, I mean, whatever. Anyways, as for Kakashi, I cannot think of a similar justification, because I know for a fact he does not have the cells of Hashirama Senju. But, I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. That sort of stuff is all really up in the air, and it's kind of up to headcanon, so, yeah, I'm gonna just not. So, yeah, that's gonna do it for today's video. Hate to end it so abruptly, but there's really nowhere to go from here on the subject of Kamui. Regardless, I think it's really cool, and I'm glad I finally got to talk about it, because I've been meaning to for a while. A lot of you guys have requested it, so thank you. Kamui's really cool. I had a lot of fun making this video. But, uh, anyways, yeah. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, and, uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button. If you have any ideas for future video topics you want me to cover, leave them in the comments below, and I'll get to any of them that I like. At some point in the future, anyway. I have a huge backlog of videos I already need to do, but whatever, that's neither here nor there. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day, and I do hope to see you in my next video. Till then, talk to you later. Swaikage out. Bye.